Go West isn't often mentioned as one of Buster Keaton's greatest films, but it was the first Buster Keaton movie I ever saw, and will always have a place close to my heart for that reason. And watching it again recently, I realized that it's not a bad introduction to Keaton. His style, his favorite comic props, so much of what makes him one of the true giants of cinema is on full display. Seeing Go West the first time when I was 17 made me want to watch everything Buster Keaton had ever done, so I'd say it made a positive impression. What about that style? What Keaton trademarks do we see in Go West, and how well do they work? Well, as usual with Keaton, there is the skillful underplaying of comic beats, particularly when Buster is reacting. Take a scene from early in the film. Broke and unemployed, Buster has ventured out west and found himself on a cattle ranch. After being ordered to go milk a cow, he makes his first attempt to get over with the ranch owner's daughter. He tries to strike up a conversation. She cuts him off at the knees. And instead of gasping or looking wounded, Buster immediately gets on with his work. It's not only funnier than a more exaggerated take would have been, it's more true to life. After all, how many of us actually snap our fingers or stand around looking visibly perplexed after getting shot down by a potential romance. Keaton was also able to get laughs by kidding his established on-screen persona. In many films, he would occasionally sneak in gags about his pork pie hat or his small stature, jokes which today we would describe as meta-humor. In Go West, Keaton gives us one of the best examples of how he could make his legendary deadpan expression the butt of the joke. Go West also has some funny business involving a train, another Keaton trademark. No other filmmaker has ever exploited the comic potential of the locomotive with the success and persistence of Buster Keaton. The best example of this is his masterpiece, The General, which is all about a train. But Keaton worked railroad-related gags into as many of his two-reelers and features as he could. So when Buster decides in Go West to travel first to New York, and then to Santa Fe to make new friends and escape his poverty, how else is he going to get there but by rail car? Likewise, when Buster's new boss has to move a thousand head of cattle from his ranch to a stockyard in Los Angeles, it's a foregone conclusion, not just that the animals will travel by train, but that Buster will be along for the ride. Keaton made Go West two years before the general, and it's easy to view scenes like these almost as dress rehearsals for that later film. You can sense Keaton feeling his way around the train, figuring out how to shoot it most effectively, where he ought to place his camera, particularly in shots like this one with Buster moving along the top of the train cars while the countryside flies by around him, a composition most Keaton fans automatically associate with the general. Invention and transformation are other Keaton trademarks present in Go West. Keaton's on-screen persona, regardless of the particulars of the character in a given film, always displayed a very high intuitive intelligence. He liked to get laughs by turning things into other things. He did this all the time, and in Go West we see, for instance, a bed being used as a wagon, a fence being used as a ladder, and a cow being used as a horse. Not to mention the most important transformation in the film when Buster himself transforms into a cowboy. And of course, what Keaton film would be complete without one of the most thrilling images in the history of the movies, Buster running at a flat-out sprint, dressed up like Satan, no less. 
So Go West is an excellent example of typical Keaton, a good portfolio piece, but what, if anything, makes it special? If it didn't happen to be the first Buster Keaton movie I ever saw, would I still find it interesting? Would I still feel so warmly toward it? I think I would. There is something particularly fascinating about Go West beyond the characteristic genius of Buster Keaton. It's something I never noticed until I returned to the film just recently. It's this. Go West might be Buster Keaton's most Chaplin-esque film. Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin have been compared to each other for almost 100 years. And that's understandable. It's an obvious comparison. With all apologies to admirers of Harold Lloyd or Harry Langdon, Chaplin and Keaton are clearly the two greatest silent film comedians. The only film they ever starred in together was Chaplin's Limelight, and that was in 1952, well past the glory days of both. They never appeared together in a silent film. And the films they made, and the way they made them, are so different. Keaton was very collaborative and usually worked without a completed script, preferring to work out specific gags during shooting. Chaplin was very much the auteur, writing, directing, composing music, even dictating details of performances to actors. Keaton's focus was the gags, and his films are generally fast-moving with clean, efficient compositions and perfect comic timing. Chaplin's focus was Chaplin. He knew he was the greatest actor in the world, and that his performance would be the highlight of any film he made. The argument over who is better, Keaton or Chaplin, has gone on since the silent days. Chaplin was far more appreciated in his own time, but now the scales seem to be about even. The debate goes on among film aficionados, and it's mostly good-natured. It's like the silent movie version of Star Trek vs. Star Wars, except for being mostly good-natured. Me, I wouldn't want to do without either guy. I treasure the work of both men. But, if you put a gun to my head, I'll go with Buster. Which should come as no surprise, given that the title of the series you're now watching is The Brilliance of Buster, and not The Charm of Charlie. What makes Go West Keaton's most Chaplin-esque film? Well, it starts with Buster's character. Buster plays a guy identified in the credits only as friendless. He's not only short on friends, He's short on cash. When we meet him at the start of the film, he has no place to live, and all his personal possessions piled onto his bed, which he drags along behind him wherever he goes. Sound like anyone else we know. There's also the tone of Go West, which is much more sentimental than most of Keaton's work. Now, Keaton wasn't Stanley Kubrick, but he was usually much more interested in making people laugh than warming hearts, Yet, Go West has this very sweet story about poor, lonely Buster befriending a cow, Brown Eyes. In fact, Buster spends a lot more time with that cow than he does with the de facto love interest, whom he finally seems to be hitting it off with in the closing moments of the film. That final shot strikes me as a bit more Chaplin than Keaton, too. Keaton usually liked to end on a joke. It was Chaplin who made marching off toward the horizon at the conclusion a stylistic trademark. Though the shot also demonstrates one of the key differences between these two. Chaplin usually had his hero walk off at the end. Keaton, who doesn't display the suspicion of technology and progress that is apparent in much of Chaplin's later work, rides off in the back of a car. So what do all these supposedly Chaplin-esque elements of Go West mean? 
Did Keaton make his film this way on purpose, as a rib on Chaplin? Or did he notice how much more commercially successful Chaplin's films were, and try to tap that vein himself? Ah, uh, I don't know. This kind of in-depth analysis is fun, and useful for lots of things, but I don't think it's much good for telling us what was going on in the filmmaker's head. Most things that we as the audience read into a work of art are just that. Things that we as the audience read into a work of art, not anything intentionally put there by the artist. Is it possible that Keaton intended to mimic Chaplin with Go West? Sure it is. And if that's the case, I think that's pretty cool. But it's more likely that the similarities I've pointed out between Keaton and Go West and Chaplin are curious coincidences and that Keaton just wanted to make a sweet, sincere, funny little movie about a guy who was down on his luck and found a friend when he needed one the most. That modesty, like much of the rest of Go West, is typical of Buster Keaton, who may not only have been the cinema's greatest actor and director, but also its most humble. I'm Steve Shives. Thanks for watching.